Hagutin Erev Shabbos, everybody, and welcome to episode one, chapter one, our first episode of Jerry's Parsha Pond. I uh, wanted to share some of my thoughts on each Parsha. I hope I'm able to do it for each Parsha, but I'll do the best I can. So um, we're starting off right in the beginning with Bereshit which is the first Parsha of the Torah. So, there's so much to talk about, there's so much to think about, there's so much to ponder. But at the very beginning, we have to think first and foremost about um, the Briyasa Olam, about the creation of the world and how Hashem um, created the world in six days. Notice the air quotes on days, because as we know, uh, we don't really know how long a day was and how long it was, and there's no way to really know. But if we go with science, of course, we know it was many, many millennia, billions, trillions of what we call years. But in terms of Torah time and in Hashem's time, of course, we're talking about a mere six days. And what's interesting is that in the Parsha, the Crows Godolos version, of course. That's what we used in high school. So I feel like I have to continue with that. But um, the uh, the Torah devotes a rather small amount of real estate uh, to a subject as important as the creation of such a large piece of real estate as the world. Um, when we see that so much more is given to, for example, the building of the Mishkan in the desert and there are some great uh there there's some great Torah on that, uh great Chassan Torah, great uh chas, not Chassan Torah, but uh great things to say about the building of the Mishkan and how it's a Vietnam on Israel. Very good for uh Shevabrach. But uh, we're gonna look at it the other way today and uh why so so little amount of real estate is really given to the creation of the world and I think that that's really because it's kind of beyond our comprehension. It's uh, probably the most esoteric of esoteric topics. So uh, we can't really wrap our heads around it. So as we know, the Torah only tells us what we absolutely need to know. That's very much on a need-to-know basis. So um, we're given what uh, what is important. And ultimately, the entire creation story leads up to one very, very important, uh, very important, um, what would be the best word for this, crescendo, which is Shabbat, right? The climax, if you will, of uh, creation is the Shabbat. And we're told, by here, by Evoker Yom Hashishi, the Hei Hayadiyya, that was the the culmination of all of creation. And everything we see in the first few uh, psukim of the Torah really just leads us up to that one important, most important uh, subject, which is Shabbat. And how HaKadosh Baruch Hu rested, Kavyochal, as it were, on the seventh day. And this is the first message that we're really given is that we have to emulate Hashem. The Torah says uh, right before, right before the, we're told about the Shabbat and the seventh day, Hashem says, Hashem creates man, man, human, humanity. Hashem creates Adam, humanity. And he says, Na'ase Adam betsalmenu kidmutenu. Who's he talking to? All right, so we look in Rashi, we look in a lot of the Mepharshim, talking to the Malchai Asharis, that we're, we're to learn that anything so important shouldn't be done uh, on a whim. But there's a more important uh, message here, and, and for that I like to quote Rav Tversky, who wrote a, a, a famous treatise called Let Us Make Man. Hashem is talking to us. Hashem is talking to humanity. Hashem is talking to the people, to the people that he is creating. And he's saying, we are partners in your creation. 
I'm going to give you the raw material. I'm going to give you the knowledge. I'm going to give you the ability to make logical and moral choices. But ultimately, what you become is up to you. We have choice. We are given free choice. And we see, of course, that at the very beginning, um, Adam and Chava make a not so great choice um, when they choose to not listen to uh, what Hashem told them. Right? The, uh, the, the, the famous joke is that Adam and Chava were the first people not to read the Apple terms and conditions, right? And they did not do uh, what they were told to do, and they made a bad choice, and for that, um, humanity has paid throughout the millennia. Um, but as Rev Miller Zatzal always said, Hashem knew what was going to happen. Hashem planned it all out, right? Why did things unfold the way they did? Because he wanted to teach us a lesson. Of course, man and, man and woman, Adam and Chava, were not supposed to spend eternity in Gan Eden. They were supposed to go out and na'ase adam betzalmenu kidmutena and work the land and become partners in creation and keep the Shabbat. But things are done in a way where we have to learn that actions have consequences and everything, as my, uh, as my wonderful wife Rochi always likes to say, everything is about choice. We all have to make our choices and live with the consequences. But ultimately, the creation was done for one reason and one reason only, so that we can become partners with Hashem in our own, in our own development. And to that end, probably the most important thing that we learn from the beginning of Abereshit is the importance of Shabbat, and that Shabbat that Shabbat is the ultimate blessing and the source of all blessings. And whatever we do throughout the week, um, whatever we do in terms of our own personal development, what we do to support our families, what we do in business, what we do in every walk of our lives, has to ultimately come to, like I said earlier, the culmination of the week is the culmination of creation. It is Shabbat. And more than Shabbat, uh, more than Am Yisrael, more than the Jewish people have kept Shabbat, Shabbat has kept the Jewish people. And I tell my children this all the time. Shabbat is our membership card in Am Yisrael. Shabbat says that we are partners with Hashem, that we are... Nasa Adam betzalmenu kidmutenu. In the minute Shabbat goes out the window, you're out of the club. You've basically taken your membership card and put it through a shred. Shabbat is our connection to Hakadosh Baruch to God. When we rest on the seventh day, when we keep the Shabbat, the Shabbat will keep us and we will remain a link in the eternal. I hope everyone has a wonderful Shabbat. Think about this throughout the week. Hopefully I'll be back. This is a new journey for me, so hopefully I'll be back next week with some thoughts on Parshat Noach. I'm wishing everybody a wonderful and joyous Shabbat. From the Holy Land.